while exploring one of these washes in this canyon, I turned around the corner and there was this really cool kind of interesting stack of boulders, just kind of arranged in an interesting shape. And then there's, you know, the sandstone background. And uh, so kind of similar to another one I shot, um, but this one's kind of all about the boulders. Uh, so I framed this one up with my 105 millimeter lens, just trying to arrange all the boulders and just kind of just like interesting swoop. It's a little bit of brush in the foreground that I had to kind of, you know, compose to make sure it didn't look awkward in the corner. And then there's a there's actually another boulder. So there's four main ones, and then there's a fifth one that's way off to the right, but it's too far out of my composition to use. So I'm kind of stuck trying not to include that one. So yeah, the wide angle lens is really working in my favor to help fit all this in because I'm kind of I'm up on a incline here and I can only back up so far. Uh, but the wide angle really made this a possibility for me. So glad I picked that lens up. But yeah, it's all about these really cool shapes and just a cool pattern. It's just more erosion, you know. It's just boulders that were capstones up here higher on the top of this, you know, ledge. And then they've just fallen down in this interesting shape. It's really super interesting how they arrange themselves like this. So, yeah, so I thought it was while we're shooting. So I shot two sheets of Provia on it. Settings on the first one was two seconds at F32. Uh, the second one, I was a little unsure about the highlights. But I'm metering rock tones. These are, all, these are mostly mid-tones. So there isn't really anything super bright in the scene. So... Um, I'm unsure just because of lack of experience, whether or not I want to shoot, you know, my highlights in one zone or another, you know, so I bracketed these. Uh, so the first shot was two seconds at F32. Second shot was one second at F32. So mostly it's about where to put the, the brighter tones of the rock. Uh, they're not quite really bright highlights and they're not mid-tones. So it's like these cream colors that are kind of in between. So I'm inclined to put them in zone six, but that pushes all my shadows way into the blacks. Um, I'm a little worried about that. So since I'm unsure about both uh, and I wanted to shoot doubles anyway, I just decided to bracket it. So one at uh, one second, one at two seconds. So these are the shots from the subject that I shot that morning, which actually ended up being the last exposures from the trip. Some interesting things with this one. Uh, the darker exposure turned out way better. This is this is pretty overexposed. Uh, so I'm glad that I took two different exposures because this one's a lot more useful. Uh, maybe I could, you know, do some trickery with my scanner, try to get all this detail in here, but this is way better starting point here. So I was really happy with this exposure. This one, it was these dark areas in here between the rocks that I was really concerned about trying to keep from going too dark but I actually think that it works. I mean, it should be dark, so I think this is totally fine. Um, but I'm totally glad that I that I went for the second exposure. So the one thing you might notice, which was the thing that stood out to me immediately the first time I saw these exposures, was that there's some pretty harsh vignetting in the corners here. So that ended up being a pretty uh, big learning moment for me right there. So what this ended up being, to make a long story short, uh, the 105 millimeter lens that I just bought has got a really small image circle to it. So that is the, the image that projects out the back of the lens onto the film is only just barely bigger than, than what the film is, which doesn't give you a lot of room to make camera movements before you start running into problems like this, where the image is just not projecting on that part of the film. And that's what happened to me here. I applied some front tilt to it and well, the vignette of the corners on me because it's just that unforgiving of a lens. Um, I didn't know that would be a problem when I bought this lens. Unfortunately, I didn't do my research on it. I just saw it was a good deal and it was kind of around the focal length that I was looking for as a wide angle lens. So I bought it and uh, well, this is what happens when you don't do your research. So it doesn't mean that the lens is useless. I mean, these other exposures were taken with the same lens and I don't see that issue down here. And that's because I didn't use any front movements. I didn't use any movements on the front standard of the camera on these two. I did on these ones. Uh, so yeah, it's a little rough. Uh, I don't think the shots are unusable. It's pretty dark in the very corners here, but you don't have to crop in just a tad anyway. Um, and, I'll, and I'll dodge it to brighten it up a little bit and try to recover that. I also have the sky peeking through on this one just a little bit, which is funny because I don't so much on this one. And I imagine that's just because the shit, the, where the film was shifted in the film holder a little bit, just a little bit of discrepancies but that'll get cropped off so i'm not worried about that so three out of the four corners i got problems that's uh that's not a very good batting average so uh yeah mind your corners pay attention
So what's probably going to happen in all honesty um, is I'm probably just going to end up replacing that lens. Uh, I don't know yet if I'll get rid of it or, but I'll for sure at least uh, get another one. Uh, probably something more like a 90 millimeter, kind of like I probably should have to begin with. At least I found out like this instead of something that completely absolutely ruined the shot. Um, but now I for sure know to be looking for this on that lens. So. So totally unexpected, but uh, a rainstorm's kind of moved in. Hasn't actually started downpouring yet, but uh, I see some lightning strikes that are real close. The whole northern sky just got dark. It's about one o'clock now. I spent the late morning and early part of this afternoon um, exploring a nearby mountain range. Ended up getting a little hairier than I expected. Uh, it's pretty chunky, rocky stuff, and a lot of you know sandstone rock steps and stuff. Uh, so I ate up some time. It was cool to see, but I didn't really see any potential places I wanted to photograph um, in particular. So I ran back to town, got some gas, and now I'm kind of debating what I want to do because pretty much everywhere I've been working is um, looks like it's going to get hit by some rain. And some of the areas I've been in, it's not ideal. Uh, there's a lot of bentonite clay and a lot of you know dusty roads and stuff that could turn into some pretty you know gnarly terrain if we get actually rained on with any measurable amount. You can imagine wet clay, even with four-wheel drive. I'm not no, no. <laughs> Just a little So, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what I want to try to do now. I'm probably just going to head up, um, down the highway and see you know, make make a sandwich real quick, hang tight, and see how things go. So that was it for the trip. Not too bad of a haul, I think. You know, for what? You know, two nights, three days, two nights. Uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with it. It got cut a little bit shorter than I probably would have preferred just because of weather, um, but there wasn't much I could do about that. Uh, I just want to say thanks for watching uh, and super thanks for watching all the way to the end. You have no idea how much that actually helps with the algorithm and that whole thing. So and if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and maybe while you're down there, consider subscribing. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, make sure you ring that bell icon down there. And with that, just want to say thanks again and catch you in the next one.